hear that you say that. I had a dream last night that I did chop my hair off. Oh, really? I'm too scared. Yeah, I'm too scared. It's like a, it's like a, you know, when something becomes a part of your identity and it makes you feel comfortable, it's kind of like that, like to chop it off. I would be, oh, I don't know. I should do it to challenge myself, but. I know it like takes me back to like when I was a kid my mom used to like me to have short hair and like I just not a thing (laughs) no funny you say that I was the same me and my mom used to have matching haircuts like bobs she'd always cut my (laughs) hair short yeah yeah (laughs) do you know I'm actually going to talk about your story because I'm just so so proud of your progress and how much you've accomplished for the girls that are going to re-watch this do you want to give them a bit of a summary of where you are at prior to working with us and where you're at currently and what has happened? Yes. So before I started working with Girl Fit Method, I had like a little bit of a history with eating disorders and disordered eating and like restriction, which, um, and by the time I think I started, really started like having issues in like my sophomore year of high school. And then um, like, I kind of got like, better and then things just kind of restriction took over in college and kind of after um I'm 23 now and um I I just reached a point where I was tired of doing cardio all the time eating like 1500 calories a day not even like being really um particular about, about what times I ate and like I reached a point where I really wanted to get over that and to have a more of intuitive eating style So I stumbled across you on Instagram and like a lot of your TikToks applied to my problems like directly. And um, so since I started working with you, I've increased my calories by like 400 plus. Mm -hmm. Um, I am not as rigid in my eating habits. I go out to eat like once or twice a week, which I never really did before or it scared me. Um, So with you and Vanessa, I really challenged myself to overcome those fears and my eating habits I'm so proud of you like (laughs) it's so scary the post that I was making today actually about our client Emily it's very similar in that you know we can allow fear to keep us stuck because all of these beliefs and in your instance I mean actually having disordered eating there is a fear around allowing yourself to eat certain foods you've maybe potentially demonized or um, told yourself that if you eat more, this horrible thing is going to happen. And as you probably know, the process of doing that hasn't been easy. Like it mm-hmm. would have felt incredibly uncomfortable, like making yourself eat more. However, if you'd stayed in that old mindset, you wouldn't be where you are now. And I know that your hormonal health has improved, like your cycles back, which is phenomenal. Yes. It's so amazing. But that's come out of you doing the thing that feels really hard and not giving into your fear and really persevering. So well done. Right. Well done. I'm so proud of you. And big shout out to Coach Vanessa, who's just an absolute she is is an absolute queen. Welcome back, Coach Vanessa, as well. She's just been on holiday for a week. (laughs) So yeah, I'm uh, I'm just so, so, so proud of you. Honestly, like, yeah. You're just an absolute <laughs> queen. The world's done. It's only up from here, you know? Yeah. It's only up right. from here. Because I think like as soon as you make the first steps the hardest, the first step is the scariest. But then when you are faced with other things that do make you fear, fear, feel fearful, what you will do is reflect back on that really hard decision that you make. And that kind of gives you confidence and the courage to go, do you know what? I used to feel so fearful about this particular thing. I can conquer this now in my life because I know that these thoughts in my mind, these fears in my mind aren't always logical and aren't always truth as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think even before I started working with you, I like never ate breakfast ever. And then I realized like how much that like starting my day off with eating something gave me so much more energy for the rest of the day. Yeah. Like, and I wasn't thinking about food all the time in the morning. Or like little things like that. Even that like um, like mentally as well. Like you have the physical hunger, but like just your brain doesn't kick in. You can't think properly. You can't learn properly. Everything feels so much harder when you're just not fueled, especially first thing in the morning. I totally agree. Yeah. I, th- I think that's been demonized as well as like 
this intermittent fasting thing where it's kind of like just skip breakfast. Because there's like some people that just don't want to eat in the morning and that's fine. But I do see that really, like it's really common with other women is that they just think, oh, well, I can get away with not eating breakfast and push my calories to later on in the day. And it's like, you know, the body will try and compensate for that. So you might be trying to think you're saving calories by not eating, but that has a negative impact on the total energy that you expend and burn throughout the day when you're actually not fueling adequately throughout the day. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, I've got some questions to answer, but I was going to hand it over to you. Do you have any specific questions for me to answer? Yeah, so um, one of my recurring problems has been, like, body checking, especially since, it, like, summer is about to start in, like, a couple of weeks. Like, even, like, when I walk past, like, a window reflection, I feel like I'm, like, automatically looking at oh, like, how do I look like walking by this window or like whenever there's a mirror, I feel like compelled to look in it or like see how my body looks. So like, are there any tips you have for like kind of, or like tricking your mind out of body checking? Mm, That is, that's a hard one. You know, I think body checking is not necessarily all bad. I think some of it is actually just innate in us in that we do want to look at ourselves. It's weird. You know, we do, Mm -hmm. you know, even uh, probably on this zoom call right now, I'm staring at my own face instead of staring at your face (laughs) half the time and vice versa. You know, If you've got two screens, you're generally just drawn towards yourself. So I, I, in some instances, I think it's just a natural response, a human response, but where it becomes an issue is that when we're so consumed with the way that we look and when we are looking at ourselves, we are saying negative things about ourselves or there's, you know, I don't want to say specific things, but you would know for your body, there'd be certain elements that you don't feel very comfortable with. And they are the the parts of your body you are going to check to see how that all kind of looks. Right. Mm -hmm. I think what needs to happen is like, number one, understanding that you probably have created a, a habit for yourself. And we all have in that it's just automatic that we want to look at ourselves when we do something year after year after year after year after year, that kind of that habit is hardwired in our brain, which we actually can reverse, but it's really hardwired in our brain now that it's just like second nature. It's almost like when you go in to drive a car, you don't really think about how to drive a car. You just do it, right? It's become a habit. Um, it's become second nature. And that's like any habit we create. So it's going to take some work to reverse that. But I think the most powerful thing other than the actual physically checking yourself is the thoughts that are running through your mind when you actually do that. So when we look at ourselves, if we take a quick glance and you're aware that you've just done that, really what it's going to be about is trying to rewire that behavior. So you can't stop the fact that you've just looked at yourself, but it's reminding yourself, I oh, don't want to do that. And don't allow yourself to kind of dwell on that and sit in the moment and look at yourself if that makes sense so as soon as you become aware of the behavior you want to rectify it right so I've looked at myself turning away second thing is want to be really aware of how you're thinking about yourself you look at yourself and you feel a negative comment about a certain body part that needs to be replaced and I talk about this with my girls all the time you're not going to believe that thought that you replace the negative thought with right so if you have and I'm just going to use a really silly example (laughs) Let's just say, you know, I really don't like my fingers. I do not like my fingers. Every time I look at my fingers, I go, they're disgusting. I hate them, right? And I've been saying that to myself for years. And every time I can catch a glimpse of my fingers, my brain goes straight to, oh, you got ugly fingers, right? <laughs> so random. I just didn't want to say something like, I don't yeah. know, that could, someone actually has an issue with. I hope you all love your fingers. They're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> But what I need to learn to do, regardless of whether I think it or not, the reason I feel the way about my fingers is because I'm telling myself my fingers are yuck, right? They're they're ugly. But if I begin to tell myself, actually, do you know what? My fingers are so helpful. They help me write. They help me do so many tasks throughout the day. Thank, Thank you. I'm really happy that I have fingers, right? I might not feel that. I might still look at my hands and go, oh, I hate them. But the longer that I can replace that negative thought with a positive one, that rewiring in my brain will actually, every time I look at my fingers, I'll go, I'm so thankful for my fingers. I'm so thankful for my fingers. However, it actually takes intentionality and practice time and time again to rewire that. With body checking, it's not something you can quit overnight. 
Number one, you need to be aware that you're doing it. When you are aware, allow, bring your eyes back, like take your eyes away. Be kind to yourself. It's not about beating yourself up, but it's that habit of getting yourself out of doing that. That's the physical habit. Number two is we want to think about the thoughts going on in our mind and what we're actually thinking when we are looking at our body. And you need to combat your negative thoughts with a positive one. And you need to practice just repeating that over and over. And whether that is you become aware of the certain body parts that you feel self-conscious about or that you don't particularly like and create three things that you are going to replace those negative thoughts with that you admire about that body part and that you like, regardless of whether you actually do right now. I hope that was helpful. Was that helpful? Yes, it definitely was. <laughs> it is hard. It's a, uh, it's, it's a human nature thing, you know, I did it yesterday, actually. Um, I was aware that I was just, I got changed or something and I, I looked in the mirror and we usually always look at our bum. Like we just do, like I kind of mm-hmm. turn around. I just like looked at it and I just felt nothing. <laughs> I didn't feel like, <laughs> geez, I look incredible. Or like, oh gosh, I look terrible. I was like, oh, that's my bum, you know? And I had the thought yesterday, I was like, I've had times in my life where I would scrutinize my body. And I would sit there and I would focus on that part of my body and I would absolutely tear myself down like mentally. And now I've come to a place where it's like, you don't need to look at it and be like, damn, I'm amazing. And you, I mean, if you do, that's wonderful, but you can also just be like, this is a body. This is the body I've been given. It's a part of me. It's not all of me. It's not my whole purpose or my whole value. Like I could admire it. Maybe I can feel like some days I don't think I really like it that much, but I'm not going to allow that to devalue who I am or make me feel like I'm less of a person takes reps just takes reps yeah yeah that's a really great question and a question we get a lot yeah so thanks for asking that hopefully that helps you girls yeah do you have any others for me no that was the main one (laughs) awesome that was a really really good question it's bad habits we create for ourselves and it's undoing them that just takes so much time it's like anything, yeah. it's like an addiction, you know, people are smokers or people are addicted to whatever it is, you know, you want to stop chewing gum. If you've gotten into the habit of chewing gum, you're going to, it's going to take some time to reverse that and a really uncomfortable period as well. Yeah. All right, let's get to these other ones. So I have, let's get it up here. All right, we've got lots this week. I won't be able to answer all of these, but let's see what I can get through. Okay. Ah, okay. What to do when your workouts have exercises your gym doesn't have equipment for? This is a really good question. It can be quite hard, especially if you're not well versed with alternative exercises. Um, at the gym, look, what I would recommend is so in your workout program, your first couple of exercises are compound lifts. Now you need to make sure that you're prioritizing these at the beginning of your workouts. Compound lifts. I've spoken about this um, on Zoom before. However, they are movements that use a whole range of muscle groups in your body. So squats, deadlifts, your overhead press, your bent over row. These movements require a lot of energy. They they require a lot of muscle groups, meaning we don't want to fatigue those and then go into that exercise later later on in your workout. So you really want to kind of prioritize those. If you can, do your workout in the way that we've set it out, but... If you go, let's just say you've got leg extensions and the leg extension machine is taken, then after you do your compound lifts, just, if you have to, switch out. See what the next exercise is that you've got. Or alternatively, if they're all taken, hopefully they're not, that would be really bad luck. I would be looking at your other, let's just say you were doing lower body and choose an exercise from your lower body to swap. And on the other day that you have your other lower body, you can swap out that exercise and do it then as well. If you can't get all of your workout done because of that, don't stress. It's all good. It happens to all of us. But try as much as possible to maybe just use another exercise that you've got within that workout or choose another one that you've got set on another day as well. That can be a bit of a pain when all the exercise machines are are taken. It's one thing that annoys me, that's for sure. It's just the way that it is. All right. So um, meal snack suggestions to get in protein. Like are those protein snacks for brands like Quest any good for you or should I be eating more quote unquote natural foods? This is a great question. First of all, I'm going to answer the second part of that question. 
But do you want to give us some suggestions on what, what do you have to get in your protein in a day? What's helpful for you? Um, I personally like protein smoothies a lot. I use the ones that you have in the Girl Fit Method recipe book. Um, and I also do so bars. Yes. You have like, bars as I well. Really like, yeah. Like my favorites right now are um, the Fit Crunch bars, which are really good. And um, there's this brand called like Alani New and they have protein bars and they have really good macros. I think it's like 16 grams of protein and they're only like 170 calories mm. and they're really good and that there's like a flavor called I think it's called um the munchies but it's like salty sweet and it's really good yeah some of them are like they're like a real treat aren't they they can yes. taste delicious can I get you to do me a favor are you in the Facebook group yes can you post a like a link or like just screenshot the, like the the look of it so we can because we get a lot of questions around what protein bars actually taste good because there are some that taste disgusting out there I think yeah. we've all experienced it where you're like oh that was just like just such a waste of a snack <laughs> yeah so if you could your recommendations that would be so helpful okay so protein yeah. smoothies uh protein bars as well and then I'm assuming your meals you really want to make sure that you're hitting like probably anywhere between 20 to 30 grams of protein per main meal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually as simple as it is. If you can make sure you reverse engineer. So you make sure, first of all, you've set your meals and you know how much protein is in your main meals. So if you can track ahead of time or just have an, an idea, then you go, all right, let's just say your goal is 120 grams of protein. You get 30 for each main meal. So that's 90. All right. How am I going to get an extra 30 grams in? Well, super easy would be one protein shake. That's 30 grams of protein. Boom. But you can also split that up into to snacks. So great idea. So you can do protein smoothie. You could do protein bars. Absolutely. I want to just quickly answer her point there is should I eat natural foods? I know what she's meaning by that. So like getting all of your macronutrients from foods that aren't like processed into a into something like a protein bar and the answer to that is no no we want to have a look at the quality of first of all you always want to go I say 80 80 20 rule right so 80 percent of food you want it to come from whole nutrient dense foods and I would be looking at you know making sure that you're not living off protein bars you don't want to be having no whole food sources at all but these kinds of foods are to supplement your day right so they're snacks so the answer to that is absolutely not. You want to make sure that you enjoy what you're eating and um, they actually taste good. But things as well, like Greek yogurt, wonderful source of um, protein, a very high quality source of protein. Cottage cheese, like even tuna, sardines. If you can, if you can stomach sardines, they are a phenomenal food for more reasons than one. Um, I would get all of you girls eating sardines if you can actually stomach them. I can't. I'm a little bit of a wuss like that. I, I get to, oh, can you have sardines? Are you a fish eater? Me? I'm not. No, I, yeah. I don't like fish at all. Sadly. Oh, it's just a strong smell, isn't it? If you, yeah. If, yeah. And so like a lot of us can feel queasy. Like I just can't, I can have tuna. Tuna's all right, but those strong smelling fishes are, can be hard to eat. <laughs> but yeah, they're so, so good for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good for us. Um, so all of those options are really high in protein. The like cottage cheese, eggs, egg whites are incredible. It's going to take some, it's going to take some planning ahead. But if you can plan ahead your main meals, literally you should have one or two snacks that have got a good amount of protein in them. Have a protein shake. You're literally done there. Or add in some like Greek yogurt, have with some berries, have some cottage cheese, a can of tuna, you're laughing. So it's really just about planning ahead of time. I actually have another um, yeah. recommendation too. I love granola and there's a brand called Kind and they have like one of their granola flavors has like 10 grams of protein per serving wow. and it's really good. So I can oh. share that too. Where do you find that? Yes, please share that. Where do you find that? Um, I think you can get it on Amazon, but um, I get it at Mark's and Giant Eagle, which are two like local grocery stores okay. here but I can share the brand for sure. Please do. Cause I might see if I can, mm -hmm. I can ship that to Australia as well on Amazon. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10 grams. That's a good whack. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you just pop that with some Greek yogurt, 
then like you're looking at easy like 30 grams of protein so yeah, easily totally. yeah mm-hmm. all right that's awesome um okay gonna answer this question eight weeks into the program and no visible changes how do you silence in patients how do you just keep going oh this is hard isn't it this is a really big question okay first of all I want you to understand that I can I can see where you're coming from it can be really hard and we feel like when we are trying hard with our diet and with our exercise and we're not seeing the results that we're wanting The first thing you have to be real with yourself about is where was your starting place? So I think a lot of us believe that if we're not seeing centimeters lost, if we're not seeing drops on scale, that we're not moving towards our goal. When in fact, you actually absolutely are. Having a conversation with a client the other day and she has a fat loss goal. However, she hasn't earned the right to be in a fat loss phase. And what I mean by that is if you've been chronically under eating, then you're actually not going to be able to effectively lose any fat. So what you need to do in order to get to your goal is we work on restoring the metabolism and improving biofeedback, right? Now that process is getting you so much closer to your goal than where you were when you first started. And it's kind of like you have no other option. So here this person's going, I don't see any visible changes in eight weeks. I'm frustrated. And I'm feeling really impatient. What do I do? Okay, we want to talk about the process and finding wins and celebrating wins within the process. Because getting to our end goal sometimes is going to mean taking two steps back in order to take that one step forward. And it's about if you're always focusing on achieving and finding happiness at this end goal, which will happen when you achieve something, absolutely. The beauty is actually the lessons that you learn along the way and, and, and learning to live in the moment and actually celebrate those wins. So what I want you to think about is what, okay, let's say you don't see any visible changes. Are there any other changes? Do you feel like you've got more energy? Are you getting stronger? Um, are you more cognitively aware? Are you thinking better? Are you less food focused? I want you to write those down and celebrate those wins. Now let's talk about impatience. Impatience is why most people do not get results. And that is why most people jump into extreme calorie deficits is because they want quick results. What what does, you know, probably the majority of us and our histories tell us is that we can't sustain those results. Once again, it's about understanding we are not doing this for short-term gratification. It's about, it's about setting yourself up for long-term success. Patience is a really hard thing to learn. But if you can change the way that you're thinking right now, if you can switch it around and say, do you know what? I'm actually working towards my goal. And maybe my goal right now looks a little bit different to what I'm actually wanting to have my end goal be, right? So my end goal might be to have dropped all of, you know, five pounds, right? Okay, well, in order to get here, I need to take these steps. It's kind of like if you're studying to be a doctor at uni, you need to have patience to do, I mean, in Australia here, it's about seven, eight years, right? So if I get into my second year of medicine and I'm so impatient and I'm so frustrated and I'm thinking, this is not fair. I I actually don't want to wait that amount of time. I don't want to study those many years to get to my end goal. Will I ever achieve my end goal? No, you won't. But along the way, I'm learning, I'm getting so much closer to my end goal of becoming a doctor. And that is the journey here. Reframe what your goals are right now instead of focusing on this end goal over here. Set yourself smaller goals. Once you achieve those wins, celebrate those wins. That would be my advice. I'm going to throw it over to you if you have anything to add to that. And if you don't, that's completely fine. But I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, yeah, I definitely would focus on um, not physical changes. I feel like so much better and more comfortable being in like settings with food or um, having so much more energy throughout the day, um, being present with my friends while eating a meal. Um, I think those wins to me are now more important than the physical changes that have happened because um, I'm able to be more present and if that's like a change that happens, I think that definitely deserves to be celebrated. hundred percent. And that's what life's about. If your diet and your exercise regime is the focus of your life, 
you have an unhealthy diet and you have an unhealthy exercise regime. That needs to complement your life. It does not need to be your life. And if it is, it's not sustainable. And that's how we get quick results. We do extremes, right? And it becomes our life and it sets us back. But that healthy relationship with food and that freedom to be able to live your life, funny enough, once you do achieve that and that's how you view food, that's how you view exercise, you actually get those physical results because you're not yo-yoing all the time and gaining that weight back, losing that weight, having a terrible relationship with food, hating yourself, but you view all of the choices that you make around health and fitness in a positive light, which then means you make decisions that are going to be respectful of your body, which actually then will will result in the physical changes that you're wanting to see. Yeah, bang on, love it. Great. Well, we're almost out of time. That's I've got a few more questions that I might leave them for next week, but thank you so much for coming on. Today, Dana, I should get you on the podcast if you're if you're ever up for it to share your story. Oh yes, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely touch base about that. I think your story is a really, really powerful one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Have an incredible evening and hopefully I can see you next week. Yes, definitely. I'm yeah. definitely gonna try. <laughs> yes, please do. Please do. It was so nice seeing you here today. All right. Enjoy the rest of your, of your night and I'll um yeah, hopefully see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.